Well, hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're truing up a framing square. Well, I received an email from a viewer asking me, uh, kind of questioning the inaccuracies of one of these, a framing square. And guys, this is the thing with a framing square, I have yet to see one come from the store, come straight from the store where they were accurate, where they were at 90 degrees. You're either looking at about 89 or 91. Most of them are cold punch steel. So there is some in inaccuracies that are created through that process, plus being tossed around at the store through shipping, et cetera, et cetera. They don't treat the tools as gingerly as some of us do. So. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to test the square uh, for square. <laughs> and then when we see that it's out, or if we see that it's out, I'm going to show you how to fix it and how to fine tune one of these bad boys to make it just as accurate as one of your fine squares in the shop. So let's head over to the bench and have a look at this square. Well, if you want to fine tune and fix a square, you first need to know how to test it as to whether or not it is a true 90 degrees. So what I have here is a scrap of plywood and the method that you want to use. Now guys, this works for any square, not just a framing square. Any of your fine squares, you can test them just like this. Um, so what you want to do is place one edge of your square against the flat edge and draw a line from end to end of your square, just like that. Now, don't move anything other than your square, flip it around completely over, line it up with that edge again, and we're going to draw a line right beside this one. Now guys, if this square was 100% perfectly square, these two lines would be exactly in line with each other. But look what we have here. We have down here, they're very tight together, but as they go along, they're spreading apart. So you need to determine at this point in time what that problem is. Is it that the square is too wide or is it too narrow? And in this case, I'm going to say it's too narrow. So how do you fix that? Well, let me show you. So what you're going to need to fix this is a nail set and a hammer. And I know it sounds a little barbaric, but this is the method that you're going to want to use to fine tune this square. Now guys, if you need to expand or widen your square, what you're going to do is you're going to strike right in here on the inside of this corner with your nail set. If you want to constrict your square, if it's too wide and you want to bring it in, you want to strike it in the outside corner here. So. I am thinking that mine is too narrow. And you know what, sometimes it confuses me which way it is, but from what I can see, it looks like it's too narrow. So I need to widen it. So we need to strike it right here on this inside corner. Now, once you give that a couple wax, we can test it again. So once again, we'll place it here on the edge of the board, making sure that it's flush against the edge and we'll draw a line. We're gonna turn it over, line up our edge and draw a line. Now guys, look at that. We have already here improved it quite a bit. Compare the lines here now. This one here is tight, and look at how it's almost right on the money up here, whereas over here it was much wider. So that's not a problem. We've gotta pull it in just a little more. So we're gonna get that nail set. 
We're going to put it right here in this inside corner, which is going to uh, widen it a little more. And we're just going to give it a little bit of a whack. And now let's test it again. Up against our edge. Going to run the line all the way along. Turn the square over. Line it up again and draw our line. Guys, we're almost there. Can you see that? At this point now, our lines are exact, and here we're so close. We, instead of having a space like what we have right here, we actually have a thick line. So one more crack here in this inside corner should widen it just enough to fix this. So we're gonna line up our punch and give it another crack. And now we're gonna test it again. It's a slow process, guys, but it's a good one. It's a great one to get your square back in line. Run it down there. Turn it over. Line it up. Now I've gone the wrong way. <laughs> I've gone a little bit too far. So in order to fix that, we're going to punch it in the outside edge here. So I'm just going to go to the outside corner and give it a little tap. And one more test. Guys, we are so close there. So, so close. I'm going to bring it back just another little tap. Just one. Okay, maybe two small ones. <laughs> and let's give this another test. And there we have it. Look at that. Right on the money. Those lines are exactly, exactly aligned with each other. So we can take this a little further if we want. So just to verify here, I have this, you can see a little dents here where I've been hitting it with the square or with the uh, nail set, but that's okay. I don't care about a dent as long as the square is right on. So I have here a digital angle guide and I have zeroed it out at being flush or closed. And we're just going to line it up with our square here and see what we have. And I know it's upside down, but we've got ourselves 90 degrees like right on the money. So guys, this is a great way to fix your framing squares. So you know what guys, let's take this one step further. Not with this square, we've got this one tuned up now. We can hang it back up where it belongs and we're fine. But let's take it even further with this one. This is an old square that my neighbor was throwing in the garbage. Uh, he didn't want it, he said it was a piece of junk and I said, you know what, man, don't throw that out. I'll take that. And you can see it's quite rusted. It's taken some abuse. So the very first thing that I want to do with this is we're going to take it over to the brass wheel and we're going to try to clean this up a little bit as far as uh, getting the rust off and getting it cleaned up so we can actually read the measurements on it. And after a couple minutes uh, of working at the wheel, we could already see a huge improvement in the finish of this square uh, from what it was like this with all kinds of rust and stuff on it uh, to this where we can actually read the measurements. But we're gonna take it even further um, I'm going to take this inside the house and an SOS pad, guys, an SOS soap pad, which is basically just steel wool with some uh, heavy-duty soap in it, we can clean this up even further with that. So I'm going to take this inside, I'm going to clean it up with the SOS pad, and then we're going to bring it back out here to the shop and I'll show you what to do with it next. Well, we are definitely improving the steel wool or the SOS pads really brought that up nice, but there is still some deep staining here. So you've seen me use it here on the show before and I'm going to take it to the square and see how it does. I'm going to hit this with autosol polish and see if I can't buff it up. Now guys, this is all cosmetic. Um, having a square that has rust on it and that sort of thing, 
doesn't really affect its functionality. So this is all cosmetic. And then we're going to get into actually tuning this one up to show you that it doesn't have to be this huge framing square. So let me hit this with some auto saw polish and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done that. Well, you guys can see that this is what it looked like. And truth be told, I hit it with the SOS pad. I hit it with some 600 grit wet dry sandpaper and some penetrating oil, sanded it down. Then I hit it with the brass brush. Then I polished it with autosol and gave it a quick coat of wax, tool wax to seal it in. And guys, this is what you end up with. Now, I'm not going to say that you're going to get these results on every tool, but if you take the time and do a little bit of work from what it was to what it is now, you've got a brand new tool, guys. Okay, so let's, you know what, instead of doing the square line on the board and that sort of thing, let's go straight to digital here and see how aligned this one is. We are at 89.9. So we need to bring it out just a little bit. So we don't want to punch it very much because 0.1 degrees is a tiny amount. So we're just gonna go here on the inside of our square and just a little tap. Let's try it now. It's still 89.9. We're gonna give it another tap. Check it. Okay, we're going to give it a bigger tap. <laughs> this one here doesn't like me. Now that one's got to do it. We're right on the border. I saw it flicker into the 90 degree mark just for a second. There we go. There we go, guys. Look at that. Perfectly 90 degrees. Now, how many wax did I give that? Five. Starting off slow. There's no need to crack it really hard on these little ones. So there you go, guys. Look at that. From a really used up square to this beautiful piece of equipment. And now perfectly tuned. So uh, look around, guys. Look in your shop. See if you have one that needs tuning and test it and get to it. And there you have it. Tuning up and refurbishing your framing squares. Guys, framing squares are absolutely famous for being out of square right from the get-go. There's too many things that can affect them, but if you're just using them to frame a door, that 0.1 degrees or that 0.4 degrees isn't really going to affect you that much. But if you're using it for your woodworking, it can throw you off quite a bit. And one degree off on, say, a picture frame, an 8x10 picture frame, is a huge difference. So if you are using a small framing square to check your frames for square once they're clamped up and it's out by one degree, what are you really checking? You're checking nothing because you've got a faulty device. Now, it's not necessarily a question of quality. It's not necessarily a question of you bought a piece of junk. Um, case in point, this old Johnson Square here uh, that we refurbished, which turned out absolutely amazing. This thing is unbelievable. It's like brand new all over again. Um, this is a Johnson Made in USA number 430. This was a fairly expensive tool in its day and um, it got abused and neglected and tossed off to the side and my neighbor was going to trash it because it was rusted. Uh, and what did it take? I worked on this for probably about 45 minutes. Um, all in all, between all of the processes of the 600 wet sanding with the oil and the brass brush and the auto saw and the soap pad, etc., etc., and what five punches with a nail set? 
<laughs> and it's a brand new tool. Will I give it back to him? Heck no. <laughs> uh, you were going to toss it out anyway. It's mine now. So, uh, guys, really, check out yard sales for these things. If you're in a yard sale and they've got some older tools there and they're like dirt cheap, $3, $2, whatever, because they're rusted and they look like they're decrepit, a little bit of TLC and you've got yourself a brand new square. But even those new squares require a little bit of TLC because, well, they're punched steel and they're not necessarily square right from the get-go. So guys, remember, if you want to increase that angle, you punch on the inside of the square. If you want to decrease it, you punch on the outside corner right in the tip. So. As long as you keep that in mind and don't, don't, go, don't go too crazy on the hammering and punch, punch, punch. No, just one whack and test. One whack and test. That's all you got to do. And uh, you can get these things fine-tuned so that they're perfect. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. A little bit of a different show, but it's one that has a lot of value. There are so many woodworkers out there that have these framing squares. And because of their... Uh, their tendency for inaccuracy, they don't use them. But honestly, guys, you saw how easy it is. You saw how quick of a process it is to tune them up to perfection, to make them a useful tool in your woodworking arsenal. So don't discount them. Don't pitch them. Don't give them away because they're rusty. Don't throw them in the garbage. Fix them up. Make them work for you and use it to your advantage. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you've learned something because uh, there was quite a lot to learn here. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.